Hello everyone, today is new product day and the new product is the F4U Corsair. This is a plane in that same series of uh, small aircraft with the A1 Sky Raider, the Hawker Hurricane, what do we got, the P-51 and the Tempest. So this is the last one in the line I believe and again it's an F4U Corsair. For you Warbird fans out there this is a very faithfully recreated model. If you have any of those other models in that series, you will find that they have great scale detail, great paint, and they look really, really fantastic. This one is the same. It looks fantastic. It's painted in that marine Pacific scheme of the uh, white on the bottom, light blue and blue on top, and just looks great. So I guess without any further ado, let's get to the unboxing and check out what's in here. So there's everything out of the bags and it just looks fantastic. What a beautiful looking model. Again, like the others in the series, they have super scale detail and they just have really great paint on them and they look great. That's the good news. The bad news is that unfortunately we discovered that the factory had unfortunately supplied us with some bad gyros for these planes in particular. And we caught the error too late before they were already shipped in the boxes and on the way to the warehouses and all that stuff. So they were in containers, we discovered the problem and so what we decided to do was to have a bunch of gyros shipped to us from the manufacturer and this will be included in your box. When you get your Corsair you should have in the box or maybe taped to the outside of the box but somewhere with the pack package you should get a replacement gyro. And I suggest that the first thing you do is replace the gyro that came in the plane. So here's the replacement and to replace this it's very very simple. I'm going to get a close-up on this and we'll show you how to do it. All right, so we're gonna walk you through replacing the gyro. To start, there will be a supplemental file in the manuals and files tab of the product page that has some instructions and some photos to show you how to do it. It's very, very simple. All right, to remove the gyro, you very simply just pop the zip tie off, okay, and remove the connections. In some cases your gyro may be glued down, it might be only taped down with a double sided tape. If it's glued down, just use a hobby knife and just very slowly and carefully cut through the glue on both sides, okay, like that, and then it'll pop right out. So you just simply remove this one, and you take the replacement, okay, which is this one, and just feed those wires in to the top portion where your receiver is going to go and connect to this. And use the double-sided tape, just secure that down. Because of the way the, uh, the mount is, it may not really stick too well with the double-sided tape, and that's why we're going to use a zip tie. Okay, so just secure that zip tie in there, like so. Clip off the excess, and then reconnect everything. And that's it. Very, very simple. When you get your plane ready to go and it's all fired up, powered up and everything, there is an initialization um, protocol, procedure, for the gyro. And it's outlined again. This will be another supplemental file in the manuals and files tab of the product page. Just shows you how to do it. All right, shows you um, what the LEDs will look like, and that way you'll have no confusion as to whether or not it's set up properly. If you have any questions about any of this, obviously reach out to us on support. We have live chat 24-7. We have a ticket support system, and we're here to answer your questions. So any questions about any of this stuff, just let us know. We'll help, help you out with it, take care of it. So uh, let's get to building this, and uh, we'll have some fun with it.
Okay, while I'm on the subject of gluing things in, which is going to be this horizontal stab, um, as I pointed out in the Lancaster video, you should always take away any paint that's on a surface that's going to be glued. You don't want to ever be gluing paint to foam or paint to paint even. You want to glue bare foam to bare foam. The inside of this piece here is bare foam, but there was paint on this horizontal stab. So like I said, I'm just using a bit of packing tape here to remove that paint, and that way I'll get a good bond with the glue, okay? And uh, assembly is very, very simple. The horizontal stab just goes right there. That'll get glued in. And the vertical stab on the rudder, that also gets glued in there. So I'm going to remove this paint as well. And just put a bit of glue on there and drop that straight in. So first, we will do this piece here. So the paint on this piece of balsa that's coming down from the vertical stab, um, can't get the paint off of that. So there's a bit of plain balsa, so I'm going to concentrate the glue there, but uh, it should be fine. I mean, it'll still adhere, of course, it just maybe would be less than ideal if it was just bare, but like I said, it'll be fine. Nothing to worry about. Get a little glue down here. Right, when you get to putting on your wheels, uh, pretty obvious which way they go, but if it's not to you, um, the wheels would go to the outside. So this would be the left side, the wheel facing out, and this is the right side, again with the wheel facing out, and the wheel pants are the strut covers in the front. And then there's little screws, and they go on just like that. It's pretty obvious which way they, where they go. There's only one hole. Go right in there, and that just holds them in. All right, here she is, pretty much assembled. And wow, again, what a great looking model. I know I've said it already, but uh, it's just beautiful. It's scale, it looks great. Paint is really nice, good quality. It's fantastic. I can't wait to fly this thing. Uh, and speaking of flying, people have asked, if you can fly these planes without the gyros? And the answer is absolutely, yes, you can. Stuart's flown them without the gyros. I've flown them without the gyros. They fly fine. They're perfectly fine without the gyros. Um, so you can disconnect the gyro if you don't use it. Um, uh, there's no function to turn it off, unfortunately, with the radio. So on some line, I just unplugged them. But, uh, you know, the gyro is really just to help you in windy conditions. So maybe if the wind's blowing a little more than you'd normally be comfortable with flying a small model like this, the gyro helps you stay afloat and um, gets you outside on a day when you might be otherwise grounded. That's really all they're there for. It's just to help you out a little bit. So um, let's see, what else is there? Uh, we could put the bombs on, but I think uh, the, the rockets actually. I'm going to skip that for now because I like my planes to be more of a cleaner look. So I'm just going to finish up with the clevises on the tail and uh, we'll go from there. That about sums up the build, or actually more just an assembly of this model. It went together in 10 minutes, I think. It's very, very simple, very straightforward. Bolt the wing on, glue the tail surfaces in, and you're pretty much finished. And again, just replace that gyro and you'll be all set. I'm going to walk you through the gyro initialization procedure. It's very, very simple. Put the plane on a nice, firm, level surface. Power it up. The gyro will do what we call the dance, where it's going to move each control surface three times. And just zzz, 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 zzz. Again, we call that the dance. Let it do that. Don't interfere with it. And after it does that the first time, unplug the power, okay? And just make sure that all your control surfaces are trimmed out properly, mechanically trimmed, meaning that when they're in their centered positions, they are centered and they're aligned with the surfaces the way they should be. If you need to uh, loosen or tighten the clevises on each surface, go ahead and do that. So again, just to make sure that your control surfaces are all trimmed out nice and straight, okay? Once that's done, power it back up and let it do its dance again. Do -do 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 -do. Okay? Does its dance, now everything should be ready to go. If your LED is flashing slowly, the gyro is in expert mode. If it's flashing, if it's on solid, that means it's beginner mode. And generally speaking, we kind of suggest you start out in beginner mode. 
um, beginner mode will give more correction for any kind of deviation from an expected flight path. So if the plane is flying along and it's buffeted by the wind and the right wing dips, the control surface, the aileron, is going to go down, which will bring the right wing back up. Okay, and again, in beginner mode, it'll do that more aggressively, so you can fly in even windier conditions with beginner mode. If you have your gyro set on a three position switch on your radio, which I do recommend doing, you can switch between beginner and expert. And again, you, there's no way to turn it off from the radio, so if you want it off, you'll just have to disconnect it and remove it from the picture. But that's about it.